This viscast is about simple harmonic motion. Please pause the video and read through the question carefully. The question is in two parts. An object is undergoing simple harmonic motion and we're given some information about that object, such as its mass, the amplitude of oscillation and the period of oscillation. And we're asked to calculate the magnitude of the maximum force which acts on the object during its motion and we're also asked to find what is the spring constant if the object which is oscillating is a mass on a spring. To start with I want to find the force which is acting on my object, the maximum force, and from that I think I can use Newton's second law, remembering that the maximum force is going to be my net force, which is the mass times the maximum acceleration. So if I can find the acceleration, I know the mass, and therefore I can find the force. What I need to do is re recall from my understanding of simple harmonic motion, how do I find the acceleration? Firstly, an object which is undergoing simple harmonic motion will have a displacement, x, given by the amplitude a times the cosine of the angular frequency omega times t plus some phase angle. This describes simple harmonic motion. The object oscillates with maximum amplitude a and how fast it oscillates depends upon how large the angular frequency is. To find the acceleration from this, I can recall that it's just the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Taking the second derivative of the right hand side of the equation gives me minus omega squared a cosine omega t plus phi. You may not want to do that in two steps, finding the velocity first with the first derivative and then the second derivative for the acceleration. And from here we can see that the magnitude of the maximum acceleration is given by omega squared times the amplitude. Now I'm given information about what the amplitude is. It's 8.5 centimeters or 0 0.085 meters. And even though I'm not given what omega is, I am told what the period of oscillation is. I know that t is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. Fortunately, I recall that there's a simple relationship between these two terms. The angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency in hertz f and the frequency f is just the reciprocal of the period so omega is actually equal to 2 pi divided by the period. So I know the period, I know omega, I can find omega squared, I know a, I can find the maximum acceleration, I know the mass so I can find the force. So we're almost there. So that maximum force is going to be given by the mass times my acceleration which is omega squared times a and we can substitute for omega uh, as 2 pi over t so squaring that I get 4 times pi squared divided by my period squared times my amplitude. All of these numbers are known. My mass is 0 0.12 times 4 times pi squared times my amplitude 0 0.085 divided by the period 0 0.2 all squared. And if I put that in my calculator I end up with my force being 10.0 newtons. So that's the answer for part A. For part B we're asked to find the spring constant if this happened to be a mass on a spring. So what I realize then is that if I've got a mass on a spring then the maximum force that I've found here is when the spring has its maximum extension. That is when the object or body has a displacement equal to its amplitude. So x at this particular time is just equal to a when the force is equal to the maximum force. Because from Hooke's law, the force that the spring exerts is equal to minus kx. Force has a magnitude of 10 newtons and a direction to the left. 
So actually it's minus 10 newtons on this side. That's equal to the minus of the spring constant K times my displacement. And my displacement X is the amplitude, which is 0 0.085 meters. So rearranging this equation here, I can find my spring constant K is 10 divided by 0 0.085, which gives me 118 newtons per meter, which has the correct units for my spring constant. I should go through and do a quick assessment of this. One check I can use is recalling for simple harmonic motion that the angular frequency omega is given by the square root of k over m. So if I put in my evaluated number for k at 118, the mass that I have, which is 0 0.12 kilograms, and take the square root, I find my angular frequency is equal to 31 radians per second. Why is that a useful check? Well, I can see that there's some consistency that my frequency is given by omega divided by 2 pi. That's now 4.95 hertz. And the reciprocal of my frequency, t, is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. That seems to be completely consistent.